What is Docker? How do I get started with Docker? What are basic Docker commands? Now, if you have these types of questions, then you've come to the wrong place. In this video, I'm gonna be skipping the nitty gritty details of Docker, largely because I don't understand them well enough to explain them concisely. What I will do in this video is go over the main issue that I've been having with my Goodreads for Gamers web app, which has a microservice architecture, and discuss how Docker solves these problems. So stay tuned if you wanna learn about how Docker can simplify building web apps that have a microservice architecture. For the past few weeks, I've been working on this simple web app right over here. And all it does right now is collect data from ROG.io's video game database, stores it in Mongo, and displays the images. So there's a front end, back end, server, and scripts. And these are all running in a microservice architecture. So now let's go over the issue that I've been getting with this microservice architecture. Now, the reason I have this issue is because usually when you're making small local apps, you don't even want to create microservices. You kind of just want to have everything in one like big code base. But because I split it up into microservices, I have an issue with running all of these services separately. So let's take a look at this image on the right over here. Here we have a front end microservice, which is running in view that interacts with the backend microservice, which interacts with the Mongo database, which contains the data that comes from the scripts microservice. So in order to run these microservices, it is a huge ordeal. First, I have to start the Mongo database. You can open up a separate terminal and run the Mongo database command. Afterwards, what I have to do is run the scripts because once Mongo database is up, we have to collect all the data from ROG IO. Running the scripts, I only need to do it once because technically MongoDB stores this information uh, on my computer, so I don't have to run it multiple times, but let's just think about the worst case. In that scenario, I have to open up MongoDB and then run the scripts. Once I run the scripts, I can start the backend and the backend connects to Mongo database. And then I have to start the front end, which connects to the back end. So here you can imagine my terminal having four different screens in the worst case. And it just gets really annoying to test, debug, and do all these sorts of things with a lot of microservices up and running. So let's just run through this example real quick. I'm gonna open up my terminal, which I have right over here. And all I'm going to do is run the three separate microservices. Again, I'm not running these scripts because I already ran the scripts before and there's no point in running the scripts multiple times. So I can start off by doing MongoDB. That's the command to start up the Mongo service. And then I head over to the server folder in my web app and then I can do npm start. So that starts up the server and now the server connects to the default MongoDB database. Obviously the client is not running. Let's just make sure that it is not running. So if I refresh, it should error out. If I refresh, it should error out. So now we can go and run the client. So we're gonna do npm start. And so that is going to start up the client, which kind of talks with the backend and the backend talks with MongoDB. So if we go over to our link over here should be working and of course if you go to games we should see it right over here so that is sort of the general workflow that i have right now before docker comes into play now let's take a look at what docker does for us in order to dockerize a specific application you're going to need to create a docker file so each of these microservices is gonna have a Docker file. We can kind of ignore this Docker file for MongoDB right now. We have a Docker file for the front end, a Docker file for the back end, and a Docker file for scripts. In this Docker file, you define an image that can be made for this specific service. And once you have these images, you can start running them. That doesn't seem quite different from what we have over here, right? 
okay, we're running a microservice. All right, it's the same thing as running an image, right? That, that is pretty much true. So if you have these Docker files and you run them, you're still gonna need separate terminals to run all of them separately. Now, the interesting thing happens is when you create a Docker compose file. So in this Docker compose file, you specify how to run these separate images. You can specify that, you know, MongoDB needs to be running first and that scripts depends on MongoDB. And once you specify that, Docker Compose will make sure that MongoDB is up and running before it starts running scripts. And then you can also specify that backend requires the database as well. Finally, you can also specify that frontend needs to run after all the other containers have started running. And this specifications can be written in a Docker Compose file. This really, really simplifies how you can make microservices work. So you can imagine that if you add another microservices, all you have to do is add a Docker file and edit the Docker Compose file to run this image. And when you have edited that, which I guess it's like, it's not that bad because it's, it's only a few lines of code. Now you have this microservice running and it runs exactly the way you want it. All you have to do is say docker compose run. And as long as your docker compose file, which is a YAML file, specifies how you are starting your containers, it's good to go. Let's take a quick look at how you can run the microservices web app with docker compose. So all you have to do is go to the file or go to the directory where you've defined your docker compose file and you say docker compose up and dash dash, uh, you actually don't need the dash dash build. So you can just say docker compose up. So when you're first running the docker compose uh, command, it takes a lot longer to build because the images are not created yet. But once the images are created, if you run it a second time, it is a lot faster, a lot smoother. So now that we've run docker compose up, we can go back to our client side code and if I refresh this page it should show the exact same thing except now it's dockerized so yeah we got docker to run our web app now let's take a quick look at the code so we have our client side code here and we can open up the docker file now this is a this client side code is written in view so this Docker file is pretty much copied from the view demo app. This is actually a little more complex than I would like. So let's take a look at the server side Docker file. So this is a nice and easy, simple Docker file that we can look at. Same thing here. We're just getting the node version that is a little bit smaller than the latest node version and kind of just copying our package.json, installing the files copying everything inside of this directory. So like the config, the models, the SRC folder, and then exposing a port and basically running the server. This is just the command to run it. Yeah, basically the same code inside of the scripts Docker file. Now the important thing to look at is gonna be the Docker compose file. So this starts up the Mongo microservice and then you have your server, your client, and your scripts microservices. One thing to note is that the server here, uh, it depends on Mongo, because if Mongo is not up and running, then server will fail to connect to Mongo, which is not good. Uh, I didn't do any sort of error handling, so if Mongo is not up, then we're just gonna have a ton of bad errors. So kind of just wait for Mongo to be up and running. Same with scripts here. The scripts, again, waits for Mongo and then Basically, what this does is runs the Docker file inside of scripts. And what that Docker file does, run, does everything in here. And the last thing that it does, as we can see here, is it kind of just runs the script.js file. And that script.js file kind of just collects data, puts it into MongoDB. So that's a little bit of the code rundown for scripts. and 
we obviously don't need to run these scripts every time. So I could kind of just comment this out from the second run because running scripts every time and populating the uh, Mongo database with the same data every time is kind of redundant. So here we have our server, which also depends on Mongo being up and running first. And we have our client, which I guess it, oh, it depends on the server. So yeah, we, we wait to um, start up the client microservice until the server is up and running. So right now I'm actually not using Docker for the best reason. We kind of just have all of these microservices running on a single host. So it's all running on my Mac. So scaling this wouldn't really make sense. Say I want another front end microservice. I would just be scaling this all on my own Mac, which isn't really what the best part about Docker is because that's not necessarily scaling it at all. And that's just going to make my Mac, you know, it's just going to start revving a lot louder than normal. Docker is used for scaling across multiple machines. So you can imagine that if I had one microservice running on, you know, say this computer, and then another one, I had another computer for the back end, one for the front end, maybe two for the front end, and then maybe maybe one for the back end or something like that and maybe you know one for scripts right that's when you start really um, using docker to its fullest capability and to do that you're actually going to need something called docker swarm which which i believe it specifies how you can run a, a, like a group of these containers on different hosts all together as you can imagine that is going to be a nightmare to connect all of these different services and maybe you're going to need a load balancer or things like that and of course that is what docker swarm and kubernetes are really good at doing is this thing called container orchestration on multiple host machines now this is definitely something to think about in the future uh, for now the docker setup that i have will allow me to run multiple containers on my own Mac, which is totally fine because I have zero users. And if I ever build this app, it'll just be one user, but it does simplify the development process. I don't have to be running four terminals. If I ever want to add another service, I don't need to be running five terminals. I can just do uh, update the Docker compose file and simplify development on my machine. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did leave a like and subscribe for more in the future. お前はもう